Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel for today's classic Hollywood Glam makeup tutorial. Before we get into the makeup, I want to briefly tell you a little bit about this beautiful light pink silk robe that I'm wearing. So this was sent to me from a brand called Lily Silk, and at the time they had contacted me, I was actually on the hunt for a luxurious, beautiful robe, something that I could wear during filming while I'm doing my tutorials. So it was a perfect partnership, and then they told me a little bit more about the brand. They use 100% grade 6A mulberry silk. They're certified, so there's no chemicals in any of their dyes. They have a great program where you can customize or monogram your robe. They have a satisfaction guarantee, so 45 days you get your money back. When I received my box in the mail, it looked like this, so the packaging was really high quality, and so is the robe. It's so soft, it's so silky and beautiful. They have so many different beautiful colors and options, lengths on their website, and of course they offered me a coupon code for you guys, so I'm going to link that down below for 15% off. If that's something that interests you, maybe you are also on the hunt for a really nice robe to wear as you're lounging, doing your makeup, I highly recommend it. It'll make you feel like a Hollywood starlet in your own home. And speaking of Hollywood stars, let's go ahead and get into this makeup tutorial. Bold red lips, black winged eyeliner, and a matte brown cut crease has me serving vintage vibes in today's classic glam makeup tutorial. It's a look that never goes out of style and it's perfect for special events, date nights, and of course holiday parties. So let's get started. I'm starting with Dior Dream Skin to prime my skin. This is a skin perfecter, so it helps with signs of aging, pores, redness, and brightening. Plus, it creates a perfectly smooth canvas for foundation. So I'm just spreading this all over my face with clean fingers. And next, I'm going to prime my eyelids with the Chanel eyeshadow base, and I'm blending this out with my Sigma Tapered Kabuki brush before going into the Claire Obscure palette from Chanel. On a compact eyeshadow brush, I'm picking up the top left medium intensity brown eyeshadow and I'm carving out the crease. I'm concentrating the color outside but taking it inside as well and I'm bringing it down on the outer lash line and outer V area on both sides. Once I've built up the color to my liking, I'm going to blend over top with a fluffy brush to smooth out any harsh lines before moving on. Next, with a flat shader brush, I'm going to pick up the bottom left light brown eyeshadow and smooth it across my lids. I'm using the flat edge of the brush to kind of carve out the lid. I want to take the shade up to the crease, but not above it. I'm now going to go back quickly to define the crease with my original shadow and brush, adding just a touch of the medium brown eyeshadow to keep the contrast. Now on a tapered eyeshadow brush, I'm picking up that dark brown eyeshadow in the bottom right and I'm going to really carve out the crease, concentrating most of the color outside but blending inside the crease as well. I want to keep this color low and deep in the crease. Not on the lid because I don't want to cover the light shade and I don't want to take it too high either. This technique is synonymous with classic Hollywood makeup. The tapered brush helps us keep the color exactly where we want it without diffusing it too much all over the lid space. Once my creases are completely carved, I'm going to touch up the lid with that light eyeshadow and flat shader brush and then blend over the crease with the medium brown eyeshadow. This will help keep that dark crease from looking too harsh and keeps the look looking soft and blended. And then the last step is to go in with a blank fluffy brush to blend over the top. I try to blend between steps so that it makes it easier in the long run, but you'll want to take as much time as you need to really make sure that it's soft and blown out. Using a little dream skin to clean up the under eyes, I'm going to create a crisp line from the outer corner of the eye angled up towards the tail of my eyebrow, and you could also use makeup remover or eye cream to clean up any fallout. For foundation, I'm using the Lancome Tinty Doll Ultra 24 Hour Makeup. It's one of my favorite foundations and it's perfect for creating a flawless base. So it makes this old Hollywood glam perfect because I want a little bit of a full coverage but still natural matte finish. I'm blending this all over my face with the Sigma Flat Top Kabuki brush. 
And then for concealer, I'm sticking with my Tinty Doll from Lancome. It's nice in full coverage. It gives you that flawless under eye without creasing. So I'm blending this out with my Sigma Tapered Kabuki brush. And this is my standard procedure for concealer. And of course this brush is nice because it's large with synthetic hair. So it makes blending even faster, plus it picks up any excess product. To set my face, I'm using the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder, which was sent to me complimentary from Laura Mercier to review. My opinion is still my own, and my honest review is that this powder is perfect for setting foundation. A little bit goes a long way, and it's so light, I can set my entire face, not just my T-zone, and it never looks cakey, just airbrushed. To warm up my complexion, I'm using the Laura Mercier Baked Bronzing Powder. This was also sent to me complimentary to review from Laura Mercier, and it has become my everyday bronzer. It's just perfect for today's look. Since it's softer, it's not really a stark contour, and it's nice and sheer with a luminous finish. Once my face is nice and bronzed up, I'm going in with my blush, and I am using the 440 Quintessence Blush from the Chanel Fall Winter Collection. Usually with a red lip, I might go with a completely neutral blush, but this shade just gives a nice rosiness and it still goes with the look overall. To highlight the face, I'm using my Plissé Lumiere de Chanel. This is my favorite highlighter that I own. Usually I save it for special occasions, but it's really become my go-to lately. It's a nice fleshy tone. It has great shimmer and luminosity. So I'm applying this to the tops of my cheeks, down the bridge of my nose, ball of my nose, and Cupid's bow. Of course, the look would not be complete without a dramatic winged eyeliner. So I'm going to be using the new Signature de Chanel. This recently replaced the Ecrature de Chanel liquid eyeliner. Currently, it's only available in black, whereas the Ecrature de Chanel also came in a dark brown. It has a brush tip instead of the sponge tip applicator. When you take it out of the box, it comes in two pieces, so you have to assemble it. Good thing there are directions on the side of the box. First, you're going to want to unscrew the pen apart and then put the ink cartridge in the base. The cartridge does have to go in a very specific way and then you pop the pieces together and then twist the pen to close it. Once you've assembled the eyeliner, you're going to want to wait a few minutes for the liquid to reach the brush and then you're good to go. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for our eyeliner to be ready, I'm going to go ahead and fill in my eyebrows with the Chanel Brow Pencil shade 30 and then I'm going to use the Nudie Clat Stilo to highlight my brow bone and the inner corner of both eyes. This Stilo A Contour Pen is really one of my favorite Chanel products. I'm also going to use this to line my inner waterline, which really makes the eyes appear larger and pop. You could also use a white eyeliner for this part, but the Nudie Clat is a little bit more natural. I'm going to line my bottom lash line with a brown waterproof retractable eyeliner from Chanel, and this goes below the lashes just underneath and directly in contrast with the pale liner on the inner rim. You rarely see me use a pencil eyeliner on the lower lash line. Usually I just go with eyeshadow to keep it soft, but I am gonna smudge this out a little bit with a doe foot wand. And now it's time to go back to the black liquid liner. So I'm going to do my best to capture this process on camera. Using very small light strokes, I'm going to slowly line the top lash line, working my way all of the way into the corner of the eye and then working my way out. Once this liquid liner dries, it does not smudge, it won't run, it stays in place all day long. The formula is incredibly long wearing and the applicator makes it really easy to apply. This was the first time that I used it on myself and not clients and I truly prefer it to the original Ecrature de Chanel or any other liquid pen liner for that matter. Now to create the iconic wing, I'm going to flick out from the corner of my eye, angled up towards the tail of my brow, and then I'm going to connect it straight back to my lash line and then fill in the wing. With liquid liner, practice makes perfect. When it comes to liquid liner, and a pen is actually the easiest way for beginners to learn. I always do my best to mimic the same wing on the other side, but they sometimes end up to be sisters, not twins. You know how it goes, it's exactly the same with brows. So you just sort of do your best to create that same shape. 
For mascara, I covered my lashes with the Shock from YSL, and this is the finished eye look. For lips, I'm using a classic red, and this is the Rouge Allure No. 1 from Chanel. This was released, I believe, last holiday season, and it was part of a limited edition red lacquered packaging collection, but of course, for this, you can use your favorite red lipstick. A few of my Chanel favorites, Pirate, Gabrielle, and Daring Red, all are beautiful shades of red to achieve this look. For a little extra hydration, I'm going to top this off with the Tint and Balm from YSL. This was sent to me complimentary to review, and it's perfect to wear as a balm for just a little hint of color by itself, or to top it over a lipstick to add a little shine and hydration. And of course, since it's YSL, it has a little mango butter, so it has some treatment, and the packaging is just gorgeous, like every YSL lipstick. And that completes the makeup look, and now I have to fix my hair. So the final, final step is after straightening and styling, I'm going to hold everything in place with my Vibrant Sexy Hairspray. It has UV protection, it's color safe, so it's perfect for blondes. And I prefer a medium hold so my hair stays soft, but the frizz is completely under control in this humidity. This was sent to me complimentary to review and I love that it also has almond oil and rose extract so the smell is incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me any of your comments or questions down below. Of course, I've linked all of these makeup products down in the description box for your convenience as well as all of the information for Lily Silk Robes. Again, I have a code for 15% off in case you're also in the market for a nice silk robe or silk pajamas. The quality is top notch and they have several styles, colors, and lengths to choose from. So be sure to take advantage of the discount. Of course, the holidays are fast approaching and because they can be customized or monogrammed, they make a perfect gift. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.